Welcome in. No one asked us. Illinois basketball post game show, the best damn Illini post game show. He is Craig. I am sad. Uh, my... <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Me too, Luis. Robert, me too. Uh, Illinois falls at home to Purdue 77 71 in Champaign. Um, hello to those of you that are listening, watching, wherever you are. Get in the chat. Let us know your thoughts. If you're watching this after the fact, get in the comments section. Let us know uh, how sad you are. Uh, are you disappointed? Are you discouraged? Are you angry? Are you just, you know, okay. Uh, like, share, subscribe, all that stuff. Uh, we had a really good show after the Wisconsin game. Uh, good numbers for that one. So hopefully people are angry enough that they'll tune into this too. Hi, Craig. Hey. <laughs> How's it going? Fantastic. Great. We are electric. We are electric. Uh, yeah, this is, I mean, this is a heartbreaker. This is a game that Illinois led for the first 30 minutes, nearly exactly, uh, of this game. Um, or Purdue did not take their first lead until the 10-minute mark in the second half. Uh, and then at that point, things really kind of started to go downhill. Um, the it was, it was a very different second half than it was first half. I think that was kind of one of my biggest takeaways. Um, I think Illinois played a really good first half of basketball. Uh, I don't think they played a particularly bad second half of basketball. Um, I think Purdue made some adjustments and Illinois didn't. <laughs> I think that's really what it came down to. Uh, whether we want to, you know, put that on another a knock on Brad or whatever, I'm not sure. Uh, but I don't know that it was necessarily on the coaching. Um, I I just didn't feel like the the energy was quite where I wanted it to be in the second half. Um, I wish I would have rather have seen a little bit more Terrence Shannon. Uh, granted, he you know missed a lot of the first half with foul trouble, but I don't feel like he ever really wanted to even you know, attempt to take over. Um, but Marcus Damask was was huge for Illinois. Another twenty point performance from him, um, making his absolutely making his case for first team All Big Ten. Uh, 20 points for Damask, four rebounds. Terrence Shannon, 11 points. Coleman Hawkins, 13 points and nine boards, almost a double double, double for Coleman. Uh, 12 nice points for Quincy, uh, two rebounds for him as well. Uh, Ty Rogers, eight points. Luke Goody, three. Dane Danger, four. Uh, Monty Hansberry, uh, four fouls in three minutes, probably the stat of the night. Uh, Justin Harmon, zero points in his 21 minutes on the floor. What do you want to talk about? Zach Eady, Braden Smith, Marcus Damask, Taryn Shannon, Brad Underwood, the officiating. Hello, mom. Um, what what what's it? What is it? What is it? What's what's eating at you the most, Craig? Let's talk it out. Uh, I mean, nothing's really eating at me. Uh, okay. Illinois is the better team. Uh, really? I mean, yeah. You think Illinois is a better team than Purdue? You put. Illinois Purdue on a neutral court with Pac-12 refs. Illinois is a better team. Illinois wins that game seven out of ten times. It's interesting you say that because I th I thought when Jordan Cornett made that comment in the pregame show right before the game started on Peacock, I thought it was a little out of left field. Um, I don't necessarily think I disagree, but I'm I'm also not sure that I'm totally there. Um, but I I can I can see the argument. 
this is a Purdue team, Purdue team that has now beaten Illinois twice. Um, once in Champaign and once in once in West Lafayette. Granted, both of them have been close, and one of them was without Taron Shannon. Um, I, I can maybe see, you know, on a neutral court, maybe things go a little differently, but you had this one at home. And I don't know. I know you had some opinions about the officiating. I mean, I I, I get it. I, I see how Zach Eady gets officiated at times. Um, I feel like it happens sometimes. I feel like Kofi Coburn got officiated like that at times too. Um, no, Kofi did not get the Zach Eady treatment. You don't, you don't think so? No, no. Not even close. Not even close. Okay. What well, you just think that they don't let him, anybody touch him? I mean, there were some there were some moments it's later so in that much, game where I thought he got away from with some things. It's not so much that they call more shit on Edie. It's they don't call anything on him either. Yeah. Like he gets fouled a lot, but he also never gets fouls called. I know he had three tonight, but I didn't think some of them were fouls. Like it's it and it's only him it's not anyone else it's only him uh that they call it and i don't get it he's seven four he doesn't need another advantage like it's ridiculous now all four of imani's fouls were probably fouls (laughs) (laughs) that's what he was sent in there to do (laughs) yes but yes i mean it i i legitimately think if these two teams meet in the tournament wherever they're at, I think Illinois has a shot to win that game and they win that game five or six times out of 10. So you think if these two, if these two teams meet again, which is fairly likely, these are the two best teams in the big 10. Uh, Not the big 10. A... Cause that's big 10 refs. Into the tournament. Okay. okay. I guess we'll have to see what happens. Uh, I mean, I, I don't know that you're totally, totally wrong. Um, I, I, I do. We know what this Illinois team is. This is a, an explosive offensive team. Uh, tonight, the defense wasn't really an issue, I don't think. Zach Eady got his. He's going to get his. Um, we didn't really talk about Purdue numbers. Uh, 28 points for Zach Eady. My take in the first half especially was it just – it didn't even phase me that Zach Eady just gets – he just gets his points. Like he's just – you, there's not much you can do to stop him. And I think Illinois at times did a, did a nice job of, of limiting him. Granted, he still got his 28. Uh, Fletcher Lawyer had had 16. Braden Smith, 13. Um, Mason Gillis had 10. He had that big three uh, late in the second half. That There was – Illinois, there were just moments. There were just moments in this game where Illinois had opportunities and they were floundered away. Uh, loose balls, uh, long rebounds, uh, missed wide open shots. The Marcus Damask uh, dunk lay-in that was tipped slightly by Lawyer that led to the three for Purdue. Like that was a huge, that was a huge swing. I mean, there were there were several moments in this game that had they gone even just a tad bit differently, uh, this is an Illinois win. But I mean, you can say that about a lot of games. So I mean, I I, I get it. I, I do think these teams are probably more similar um, on a level playing field. Um, then, you know, the records and their rankings may show. Uh, but at the end of the day, Purdue is going to be a one seed in the tournament and Illinois will be lucky to be above a four. And I think that that's indicative of what the seasons have been and who these teams have, have been um, throughout the season. Um, first half, as I talked about, I think I was, I was pleasantly surprised how well Il- Illinois played in the second half, especially with Taryn Shannon only playing – what, 12 minutes in the first half. Um, he he got in foul trouble uh, about 12 minutes in, and then he didn't come back in until the very last possession where he, he got on the, the scoring end of that of that inbound uh, to get that last bucket. Um, but then the second half came, and, I mean, Marcus Damas kind of did what he does, which was good to see, um, but unfortunately they were they – were, um, it wasn't enough. It wasn't enough. The chat seems very lively tonight. Um, have you been? Have you been following? Have you been reading? Not any... really. A lot, a lot dad, of opinions. I'm sure your dad brought. I mean, that this is the the thing. Illinois yeah. or Pindus- oh, Fuck, I can't even think. Purdue went eight of ten from three in the second half. Illinois went 
0 of 6, I think. Yeah. Illinois didn't make a three point in the second half. Yeah. And my dad yeah. made pointed that out to me late in the game, too. Um, yeah. I mean, this isn't a great three point shooting team, but like Illinois tends to make a lot of them, even though they shoot a lot of them. Uh, overall, Purdue was 9 for 16. Illinois was 4 for 16 from three. Um, that was, yeah, that was the biggest difference. And, and I don't know if that was uh, Purdue's defense or if Illinois just didn't want to take them. Um, or they just weren't going down, whatever it was, the three points, three point difference was, was huge. Um, Illinois got 40 fast break points or point those points in the paint, only two fast break points. That was the one I was looking at. That's the, another difference. <laughs> this is a team that lives by the fast break. Uh, that wasn't coming tonight either. Purdue did a nice job of, of limiting some of that too. So got to give credit to them. Uh, Jay's loose balls, three pointers, terrible second half, no show from Shannon Harmon, terrible game. I mean, I don't think Shannon was a no show. Uh, the first half limiting the foul trouble was obviously a big part of it, but, but yeah, I I think we're seeing, I think we're seeing more of Terrence Shannon. Um, he did hurt his wrist. He did. Yes. And they made a comment about that. I think we're seeing more of Terrence Shannon, um, being more willing to let Marcus Damask be the guy, which I'm not not okay with. Uh, but I there are times where I want Terrence to be a little bit more aggressive. Um, and I want him to have the ball because he is, you know, he's the best player on this team. I mean, Marcus Damask is having a phenomenal uh, season, especially in, in Big Ten play. But Terrence Shannon is still the best player on this team. So I get it, um, but I would like to see more from him. What uh, I didn't like was why is Luke Goody and Justin Harmon on the floor the last four minutes of the game? Well, Justin Harmon has been on the floor at the end of the uh, game. He wasn't playing good today, though. Quincy well, was that's fair. Well. That's fair. The, yeah, the, you Goody, can't play the Luke Goody thing, I don't know. You can't play Ty against thing, Purdue. Know. He just doesn't, yeah. especially in crunch time, he doesn't. I don't know work. who else you're going to so have I don't out know who there, else, then. Yeah, I don't yeah. know who else you throw out there. Yeah. Um, but it just, their lineups late in game did not make a lot of sense to me. Yep. No, I agree. I agree. Um. Yeah, I know there's a lot of comments on here. I don't know if we want to yeah. highlight some of these. Um, I know there was a comment. Some I don't even know who it was. Somebody said something about plus minus. It's Kaylee. Um, oh, it was Kaylee. <laughs> K plot. What's up? Um, I guess we can talk about the plus minus. I haven't even looked at that. Uh, it was all minuses for Illinois. For what? Yeah, no one plus. Uh, no one was not plus a single plus person minus. in positive on the plus minus. Uh, the highest was Justin Harmon and Dane Danger, who both put up zero in the plus minus. Everybody else was negative. Again, I don't really understand how that works. Um, but thank you for asking because I know you really care. Um, oh, d- dads are all over this place. <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, they all they're all over the threes too. Good for you yeah. guys. Good for you, pops. Um, Pops plural. Yeah. Team must make some threes against a team as solid as Purdue. Yeah. This team did not. Illinois did not shoot threes tonight very well. Um, who did make their threes? Quincy. Uh, three for four. And Luke Goody had one. Oh, that yeah. was it. Yeah. That was it. Terrence was 0 for 4 from three. Marcus was 0 for 2. Coleman was 0 for 1. Justin was 0 for 2. And Amani Hansbury was 0 for 1 from, from three. So it was all yeah. Quincy Garrier pretty much from, from three tonight. I think Mark hits it on the head where this game turned. And Why did Brad go away from letting Edie be the only offense? Yeah, I agree. Um, in the first half, they did not double Zach Edie, which when you double Zach Edie, then that leaves their shooters open and they have shooters all over the floor. That's how this offense works. You have Zach Edie who's going to put up his 30 points down low. And when you double him or whatever, he can dish it out to any number of shooters. So in the first half, when you don't double him, you just let him get his points and it worked. And Illinois had a, you know, a, controlled the whole first half early on in the second half, they decided they wanted to double and then things started to change. Now they went, they got away from it again, um, which, you know, things improved, I guess, sort of. Uh, but yeah, I, I don't think this is a situation. I just don't think it's, a, it's worth it to double Zach Eady. I just don't, he's just, he's going to get his points. And mm-hmm. you just have to let him beat. You have to let you have to make the other guys beat you. Like, that's how you beat Purdue. And for Tonight even if it was even if it was just a few minutes, um, that's really where the difference was. It was Illinois' lack of three point makes and 
that choice to to double Zach Eady towards the beginning of the second half. I think the that one thing you really might where things changed. You might try and do, and I saw Coleman do it once late, and I don't know if it was on purpose or if he just got stuck there. Um, but he did front Edie late in the game, and they didn't, they weren't able to get him the ball when he when he was fronting him, and then they reversed it. Uh, Coleman got stuck on Edie's back, and they gave him the ball. I don't remember the result of the play, but when Coleman was fronting Edie, they were not able to get the inbound or the the entry pass down there to him. Um, so maybe you try that. I just hope that I just hope that Illinois doesn't play Purdue again because it's a, it's just a bad matchup. It's just a bad matchup. Um, but I thought Illinois is a better team. They they are the better team, but it's a bad matchup for Illinois because of Zach Eady. Sure, that's the only that's Zach Eady's a bad matchup for everybody. Yeah, but they've lost three games. Like, how did Northwestern beat this team? I don't know. Like, they're they're beatable. They're they're dirt, certainly beatable. Illinois almost beat them twice. I mean, I get it, but I mean, he's he's an. I don't think we see Illinois shoot another four for sixteen from three. No, I don't that's think true. you see Purdue shoot eight of ten from three in the second. Like, that's true. Is the I I think there's that stat or that Twitter account that the day after games tweets out like all the stats like this team wins this game X or X percent of the time. I think if we look that up tomorrow, I think Illinois wins this game 70, 80 percent of the time. Might be a high number, but I I'll 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 ride with you. I'll ride with you. I mean, I'll I think this is boiling down to, to what 60, I said but... four games ago. Regular season, I don't care about right now. Like, just give me to the tournament. So, well, yeah, at this point, the regular season is over. So. Um, they can't win the big 10 title. They can get still hoping to get the two seed, I guess, but you're playing at this point, you're either the two or the three in the big 10 tournament and you're playing for seeding in the national tournament. I think right now you're still a four. I think you, I guess could theoretically fall to a five. Um, or you can maybe, maybe, maybe try to get up to a three, but yeah, I'm with you. I mean, that's what we've been saying all year. That's what this team was built for. That's what I think the fan base is clamoring for. I think you can ask anybody. Uh, any Illini fan watching the show or elsewhere, what you would rather have a big 10 championship or a final four. And I think everybody would say a final four. So if that's what we're leading yeah. to great. Are we leading to that? I have no idea. No which clue. team goes farther in March of the two teams on the court at the state farm center tonight, which team goes farther in March? Purdue. I think I, 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 th- I think they, I'm not saying this is a Virginia, but I I think they have that sort of run in them. I think Purdue – I'm not saying Illinois can't make a run. I I certainly think they can, but I think this Purdue team has more than enough, and they saw what happened last year. I don't think they let that happen again. I just don't. I'm not saying they win the national championship, but I I would still say they go further. Maybe like, you know, lead eight versus sweet 16 or – Final Four versus Elite Eight, something, but I I would still say Purdue. But I get I get what you're saying, and I think this we talked about it. This Illinois team is built for the tournament. Exactly. The defense is the issue, and we know that it was a little better tonight. I would say, but the defense has certainly been the problem. Yeah. Does Blake's comment resonate well, with you at all? So I Blake made another comment earlier that I did want to chime in on because he made the comment about not getting. Um, yeah, what I'll find say? it. I'll find it. Not getting the marquee wins or something. And I, and that's true. And we I commented on it after the Wisconsin game that that was the biggest win of the season. Blake's comment, yeah. We simply can't get him get, can't get a marquee win. The problem with that statement, which isn't incorrect, but the problem is that there aren't that very many opportunities on this schedule because the Big Ten st- Dinks. Like there's just not enough chances. Like Purdue is What do you consider a marquee, marquee win? Quad one? I mean, I would say anybody that's currently in the top twenty five. Illinois has no Illinois wins against the team that's currently in the top twenty five. But they've only played Tennessee and Purdue. <laughs> Is Listen, that only, a and Marquette and Marquette? Is that a bracket metric though? I thought they went by quads. Well, it's not a metric, but it's certainly something they will look into. The whole quad thing, the whole net thing is, I don't know. It depends on who you ask. 
but it is certainly a so factor. the selection committee will be in the room they'll have the analytics of the team and one of those will be ranked wins probably yeah or something along those lines i'm just saying illinois does not have a single win over somebody that is currently as of today in the top 25 and come yeah. tournament time does not have a win over a single team that will be a top four seed. Like they just don't have it. There's just haven't been that many opportunities either. So yes, Blake's comment is correct. We can't, we can't seem to find one, but the only opportunities have been against Marquette, Tennessee and Purdue twice. So ideally, sure. You would have loved to won a one or two of those, but Michigan state isn't a top 25 team. Not going to be a top four seed. Wisconsin's falling apart. They won't be a top four seed. So where else are you going to get it? So back to the original comment that you brought up, um, he said, couldn't close Penn couldn't State, close. Michigan State, Northwestern, and now Purdue. Yeah, that's the problem. Um, any of those would have helped you at this point. Uh, but at this point, like, what are you playing for? Like, you're just playing for seeding. Um, you know, if you had you been able, because even if you would have won this game tonight, you uh, still would have had to beat Iowa and was and Purdue has to lose to whoever they play this weekend. I don't to, put to, this to share I, get a share of the title. I don't put this game in the same vein as Penn State and like Purdue took the lead with 10 minutes left. I guess yeah. different than them taking the lead with 3. No, no, that's, I, I that's different. Saying. I wouldn't put this in there. No. I no, agree. It's not even close to that same No, category. I I agree. I see I, where I he's just, coming from. Yeah. But today doesn't fit that criteria. No, but still, the point is that they are all games that Illinois were they were, they were close, and that Illinois could and should have won at times, yeah. and that they let slip away. No, I don't think this game yeah. is on the same level as those. But I I see what he's saying. Like it is one of those situations where they they had a chance and they they let it go. I don't um, know if this stat is accurate. Illinois has lost eight games. Worth, had the Joseph. lead, all of seven minutes left. It's a coaching problem. Um, I don't know that that's accurate, but. I don't know. I'll take your word for it, but yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't have those numbers in front of me. Um, I mean, it could be a coaching problem, but like I, <laughs> I don't. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> oh yes, Lance Jones. Uh, can you imagine? Can Did you, you see imagine? Rob Doster's tweet? Yes, tonight? and I retweeted it. I, what What happened? What happened? I know you commented on it. The the whole yeah. scheming. Like let Let's talk about it. Like Southern Illinois. Our alma mater, yeah, a school that we both follow. You follow it a lot closer than I do, but had yeah. Marcus Damask for the last four years. Uh, had Lance Jones for the last four years as well. Were they the same class? Yeah, same class. Uh, and now Xavier Johnson, who is one of the top three or four players in the Valley this year. I know why they left. I see Kaylee's comment. I know why they left. I'm saying yeah. like. Why weren't they better <laughs> while they were there? <laughs> and and we talked about Marcus last week or on Saturday, whenever it was. I mean, yeah. he has taken a huge leap, absolutely. But he was this, still this Marcus was, Damask was not anywhere close to what he was. All Valley player <laughs> for four he years. Was. I mean, like he it was. wasn't like he wasn't. He just went from zero to hero. Like he certainly took a huge leap. But like you have to think, like what happened. I know why they left. I'm not asking why they left. I'm asking, you have them there for four years, plus Xavier Johnson. Why aren't you better? <laughs> why aren't you better? Like, that's the problem. And it, I'm sure all sorts of people have opinions on Brian Mullins, but like, mm -hmm. <laughs> that, that's that's just, it, it just looks to. really bad now. And like, this yeah. is going to continue to happen. Like the NIL thing is going to continue to, yeah. you know, mid major players are going to continue to go up when there's money involved. Like that's just how this happens. But like that's, it's a bad look, man. <laughs> it's a really bad look. Uh, all right. Enough about Southern. Um, what else we got? What else we got? Other comments we need to talk about everyday guy. You want to talk about any of that stuff? Do you want to give out any I awards mean, tonight? I uh, mean, it's probably Marcus tonight. He's the only one that had a really good game. Coleman had 13 and nine. I was thinking about giving it to Amani. Yeah, I saw your dad's comment. <laughs> yeah. Uh yeah, I mean it was it was certainly He was the uh, only one worth Marcus was the only one worthy of it, I yeah. think. Quincy had a nice first half at least, or at least his three threes, which were nice to see. I like to see him a little more consistent, but um yeah, it was 
certainly Marcus Damask. Do we want to have the, the conversation I, again that I had well, once? Oh, wait. You want to bring up this? Well, I think Fox the River answers the question here. Four or five hardly matters. Correct. Like, yes. Uh, yeah. They're the same. They're they're essentially the same thing. Four and five. You really want to be a three. And to be a three at this point, you're gonna have to you're gonna have to do some damage. I, I think you're gonna it, I don't think getting a three is easy at this point. Obviously, I you think gotta, win, you gotta beat you gotta beat Iowa and you have to win the Big Ten tournament. You, you can't you have lose to, again at if you want to minimum you have to get to the Big Ten championship. Because I don't think that the Big Ten championship game really has that much of an outcome um, on seeding. It rarely if ever it's does. it's Illinois-Purdue. Um, yeah. Yes. But you have to, at minimum, beat Iowa and then get to the Big Ten championship. Then you yeah. might be looking at a three. Maybe. Getting this tonight would have been huge. Um, yeah. Then you probably could have – if you won tonight and then you could have probably afforded to lose at Iowa – and still make a decent run in the Big Ten tournament, you probably could have gotten three. But at this point, I think you're pretty – that four is pretty hard at this point, I think. Um, yeah. And yeah, I, that would be ideal. Looking at all the bracketology that had Illinois on the four line, to me, the five line's kind of weak. Uh, you're yeah, looking let's, at Clemson, let's talk about it. Washington State, BYU – uh, six seeds are Utah State, Florida, Wisconsin, South Carolina. Like South Carolina, yeah. So right after now, the four seed, after the top sixteen teams, it it really falls off, in my opinion. Yeah. So right now, Bracket Matrix um, has the threes being Baylor, who is pretty solid on the three, Kansas, who is also pretty solid on the three line, Duke, who could probably fall to a four if things go awry and then Creighton who is about the same as Duke in terms of where they stand and then the fours they have uh, Alabama as the first four and then Illinois and then Auburn and then San Diego State and then the fives are Kentucky BYU Clemson and Washington State the sixes are South Carolina Wisconsin Dayton and Utah State I would love to get to the three line Uh, I don't know if it happens I but don't think it happens. I think it's possible. Uh, I'm certainly not going to rule it out, but I, I don't think it's likely now that you lost this game because as Blake alluded to, uh, this team really has no true marquee wins on its resume. Um, so it is yeah. what it is. Uh, what's next? Um, Illinois goes to Iowa on Sunday. This is the last game of the regular season. This is a six o'clock local time, seven o'clock Eastern tip off on a Sunday night. Same time as the Oscars are going on. Logan is thrilled. Uh, Which one yeah, has TV? But at this point, honestly, Sunday at this night. point, does the game even matter? Truly, does the outcome of this game? It really means nothing. Um, it does for Iowa. It certainly does for Iowa. For Illinois, it means maybe the difference between a two or three seed in the Big Ten tournament. And I guess if you lose that game and then you lay an egg Friday of the Big Ten tournament, maybe you fall to a five. But if we're talking if we're talking two versus three or four versus five in those respective tournaments, I don't know. Um, like, I'm certainly – oh, decided that's to me, turn – That's me calling out the – Decided the to turn, turn the lights on? What What is Boozilla saying? Uh, all those avoiding the one seed stuff is always silly to me. Once you get past the first round, you're going to play playing good teams. Most likely tournaments about matchups and not seeding. Yes. Illinois has learned this the hard way. The tournament is all about matchups right there. Correct. Illinois has been screwed the last three seasons with getting in the same quad as an under seeded team. And it's screwed us. Well, let's hope for the best. Hope for the best. Um, what else you got? You have more more chat people you want to you want to shout no, out? Got, Anybody uh, you want to have a conversation with? Record viewers in here right now, though. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Hello, everyone. Welcome. Thanks for tuning yeah. in to the best damn Illini post game show. I know you're all just here waiting out the professionals, but uh, we're happy to have you here. Um, yeah, Illinois. We keep talking bracketology. Uh, 
and no Logan resident sad. bracketologist. Who are the four number one be. seeds? Uh, I think it's pretty obvious. It's Houston, UConn, Purdue. Uh, the fourth, I think it's probably going to go down to who wins their conference tournaments. Uh, Arizona, Tennessee, uh, I think are the two most likely there. Maybe North Carolina can, can squeak into that fourth spot, but I think Purdue Car- – Purdue, UConn, and Houston are locked in. I have not done my bracketology stuff, but the one time. Um, but I'm just going off of like bracket matrix and stuff. But yeah, Purdue, UConn, Houston are locked in, I think, at this point as the ones. And then it's basically, uh, as I said, Tennessee, Arizona, probably maybe North Carolina competing for the fourth number one. Um, Arizona, North Carolina, Marquette is currently on the two line, as is Iowa State. Um, is Iowa State for real. I I don't know. No, probably not. You know, the that Big 12 conference, they've really uh padded their net ranking. So Who was um, that that said that? Oh, uh, it's been a few people that have that have commented on it, but there was one I know the one you're referring to was I think it was Clemson's coach. Yeah, it could have been. Brad yes, Brunel. it was. It was, yes. Yeah, that stirred some yeah. things up. Yeah, the, the Big Twelve has kind of done some things to pad their net ranking, but whatever. Um yeah, I mean, I is there anybody you you just who do you not want to see? Who do you not want to see in the tournament? Houston, UConn. Yep. yep. Do you want to see Tennessee again? I don't think I do. Probably not. I don't um, think I want to see Tennessee again. But I think we are. Yeah, probably not. You're probably right. Uh, Creighton. You want to see Creighton? Or I do want not want to see Creighton. Do not at all want to see the Creighton Blue Jays. Big Baylor Shireman guy, huh? Big a lot of their guys. Fair enough. Kalkbrenner, Shireman. Um, now I'm blanking on their name. They got another guard that I feel like shoots the lights I out. Remember. Blake doesn't want to see Kentucky. Kentucky doesn't scare me. They're the same exact team as Illinois. They don't play any defense, and they're young. (laughs) They are Illinois' doppelganger, except they have a lot of freshmen. Um, That's pretty much the difference. I I mean, we could talk about the the whole uh, experience thing. I mean, that's going to cut. I think it's going to be a big factor. I really do. I mean, Illinois is an old team, and Illinois – when you can run out a lineup that has five fifth year guys or at least four fifth year guys and Coleman Hawkins, like, yep. And those are potentially your five best players. That's why it baffles me that Quincy was on the bench tonight. Yeah. Uh, He's a fifth year guy. He's been there. He was playing well. I, I don't understand it. Yeah. I, and Goody has been hobbled. Yeah. He was limping tonight. He had a brace on his knee. It, It just didn't make sense. I'm I'm not gonna. We are not the podcast to go to if you want to hear people uh, berate Brad Underwood for his coaching decisions. Yeah. If you want yeah. that, go somewhere else. I'm sure you can find it. Uh, but yes, I do agree that that is becoming more and more of his biggest flaw. Um, I don't know that he is quite the best person at managing the rotations at certain points in the games, and that was certainly an issue. I don't know what was going on. Maybe there was a reason I like Luke Goody. Uh, He does bring you some things, but as there was that point late in the game where I, I just, um, I just vocalized. I said, why is Luke Goody in the game? Like he just does not need to be in the game right now. He has Quincy been on the floor at the end of the game in a year. Like, I I don't know. Is he, is he ever on the court towards the end of the game? I I don't, I guess I'm not thinking like case by case, but I don't know. That, yeah, I didn't totally understand that decision either. Um, yeah. What about uh, Baylor? Does Baylor scare you? I've avoided watching Baylor. Um, <laughs> That's right. I forgot about that. They have the one thing that <laughs> Illinois does not have. Would Illinois and be a one, one thing, seed if they the had one Ray thing J. Dennis? Illinois can't defend uh, <laughs> is a point guard. They can't defend point guards and they can't defend true fives. And Baylor has a, tr- a true point guard. <laughs> one who... I think we all wish Illinois would have gotten. Uh, where does he fit in the rotation? I don't know, but that's a conversation for seven months ago. Um, so do I want to see Baylor? I think Illinois can beat Baylor, but 
I think they would struggle to defend certain players on that team. Yeah. Uh, Sheen is at the four with Auburn. That makes uh, too much sense. I That's exactly it's... what this committee would do. <laughs> they would put Illinois the so it would be four thirteen. Illinois would be the four. Akron would be the thirteen, and Auburn would be the five. Like that's. I'm 90% sure that that's what's going to happen. Do you believe in conspiracy theories? <laughs> yes. Oh, wait. Are you talking about in general or for like the tournament? Whatever. Whatever. In general, I think I'm I think I'm a realist. Like there are some that I believe, but like the really crazy ones like, no, nah, get out of here. But NCAA <laughs> tournament, they seed the bracket for storylines 1000%. If, like, if it's close – they're going to put Akron against Illinois as a 13 and four, and they're going to put uh, Auburn as the five, or is there another one? I don't know if there's another like storyline for the five. Okay. Let me just ask you Kentucky this. as me, the five because of chin in Orlando. Let me genuinely, and I need to genuinely ask you this question. Do you th- truly, truly think the people that are seeding this tournament know or care about these things that you're referencing. Yes. You really do. You really think these conference commissioners and athletic directors from freaking Pepperdine that are making this tournament, do you think they really care about Illinois' connection? I think they're influenced. I think either CBS or... I I just don't. I I think CBS or the NCAA say... Is where are you thinking about putting Akron? Well, you know their coach used to coach at Illinois. They're they're pretty close. Let's let's make that happen. It's all about TV. It's all about money. Of course they do. I mean, it... now they're talking about expanding it to ninety six. I mean, I, yeah, I perfect... get the money part. I just March I don't Madness buy it. is the perfect I don't buy it. sports event. Why I are we messing sh- yeah. with it? I just I don't I don't think that they really are scheduling based on who coached when and who did what to who in a recruiting battle and who like whatever 15 years. So you think it's just coincidence that it always happens. When does it always happen? When, when has Illinois ever played Bruce Pearl or bill self or like the, we always talk about, yes, the whole Loyola thing. Like, yeah, they were an in-state school, but like, okay. 2004, (laughs) 2005, 15 years ago. 20 years uh, ago. 07. 07. They had Illinois as a four. SIU as or they had Illinois as a, as a five. SIU as a four. Who was the Illinois coach? Bruce Weber. Where did he come from? SIU. And then Illinois got upset by Western Kentucky, so Illinois didn't play SIU. Whatever. Uh, moving on. Um, <laughs> There's another one. <laughs> in the tournament? Yeah, I played Kansas. I guess we got Kansas. Second round. Yeah, you're yeah. right. We did. Yeah. Beat UNLV then lost What seed were we that year, though? Eight, it, we were eight or nine. I don't remember. I think it was UNLV. It was one what? of the red and I, silver schools. I am I just – I don't buy it. I just don't buy it. And, like, there's 68 spots to play with, and you're on certain seed lines. Like, stuff that, this stuff's going to happen. I just – I don't think that they are intentionally seeking that out. I just have a hard time I'm, really believing that. I'm with your dad here. I, I think when it fits, if it's close, like the Illinois Akron thing this year, like the Illinois Auburn thing this year, they're not going to put if if Akron was 31 and one as a mid major, they wouldn't put El- Akron as a 13. They'd give them like no. A, I, that's fair. Or nine. That's yeah. Fair. So they don't like do it purposely. But if they see that Akron could be that 12 or 13 seed and Illinois is a four, let's let's put them on the 13. Let's get that let's get that storyline going. It's all about the TV. It's all about the TV. We got viewers we right that. now. If we if we want to keep firing, we got viewers on here. <laughs> you got more conspiracy theories you want to talk about? What else you got? What else you got? Um, Hit me. I don't know. Do you want to, do you want think, to chime in on the uh, amount of money that Marcus Damask may or may not have been offered to come to Illinois that yeah, Wisconsin how about did that? or didn't want to match? How about that? Yeah. Do you buy any of it? Um, I don't know. I don't know. I don't even remember the exact. I don't even remember the exact. There was a Washington, not Washington. There was a Wisconsin Wisconsin reporter that said something about 
you know, Wisconsin fans being upset that they didn't recruit Marcus. Um, and he was like defending Wisconsin because his highest, his best offer out of high school was SIU, which he went to. And then someone said, well, what about last year when they didn't recruit him in the portal? And the reporter said they did, but Illinois offered him $500,000 in NIL and Wisconsin couldn't or wouldn't match. And Marcus said, that's not true. And then his dad Marcus's dad yes. also quoted it and said, this is not the first time you've been inaccurate with the reporting. Please make a clarification. And the reporter's like, I stand by my sources. <laughs> like, <laughs> okay, it's coming from the family, dude. Like, your source can't be any more in this storyline than the family. Yeah. I mean, so that's where I don't I'm know like, why okay, they would. Dude. I don't know why they would dispute it. Like, what's the point? Like. Who cares? Like if they offered money, like that's the it's NIL now. Like this is this is it's legal. So like who cares? The issue um, is, and I know everyone says it is Illinois offered him five hundred. Like that's not as of now. That's not how it works. Like Brad Underwood can't say, "Hey, we're right. going to give you five hundred thousand dollars." So that's where I think reporters need to be careful, and most of them aren't because it makes it seem like Brad Underwood's handing over a McDonald's bag with cash in it. And that's not what it is. Like there are collectives that you go through. You don't go through the coaching staff or the university. Is it right or wrong? Who knows? Um, I just think it's a bad look for a reporter to be like, I stand by my sources when the family's like, no, this isn't true, dude. Also, you think if he really got that Marcus, the drives an Oh six Pontiac grand prix. Like, um, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> that's what I was going to ask. Do you think if he really got that amount of, amount of money, I'm not saying that he didn't or that he did. I'm just asking, do you think if he really got that amount of money that he would be still be driving that same car? Well, no. Also, what if Marcus was like, that's not true because he got like 1.5 million. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, it was, like it was low ball. <laughs> yeah, that could be true too. <laughs> It could be true. That would be funny. Um, let's see. What else? I mean, there was something I was going to chime in on. Um, what was know. it? A lot of people are talking about the tournament still. Oh, it was my dad. It was my dad. You have to sell the viewers. I get that. I understand that. But does does a viewer does it does it matter if I'm if I'm Joe Schmo living in Portland, Oregon, and my four, I, I don't want to pick what the game, but I'm, am I really going to choose which game I watch based on, well, this is Illinois versus their former head coach. Like, is that, does that really, I, I don't know. Like, it's all the same to me. Like, I don't know who you're having to sell the viewers on. Like the local people are still going to watch the game regardless. And the, the, people that just want to watch the tournament games are going to pick whichever game they want. It's all the same dollar. It's all going to the same place. I don't know. I just, that was, you know, me arguing with my father. Um, Do that on your own time. Do that when you go home tonight. (laughs) (laughs) Um, What else you got? Anything? I don't know. Anything? Anything else? Well, do you remember the year that they unveiled the bracket alphabetically? Was it alphabetically? I remember there was year yeah. one year they did something weird. It was alphabetically. It was like um, 2016, maybe. Because sure. I was like, sort Illinois of. didn't have to worry about it <laughs> at that point. But you know what I think they should do? What's that? I think they should go like one through eight and then 16 through 12 and do like 10 through 11. Or like they should do it backwards. Like, like Make the at-large bids the last ones. Sure. Figure out a way to do that. The 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 bubble stuff. Yeah. Yes. Make the bubble last. More suspense. It's a TV yeah. show. It's always it's all a TV show. That's what I'm saying. Absolutely. Do you want to see the tournament expand? No. No, I do not. Even if it's just like four teams. Because um, the the report I mean, that, that they the report that came okay. out today said they're they're not looking to expand any more than maybe eight. Rewind. Okay. Rewind. Before re- redoing the announcement, I think they should do away with the 16 seeds as part of the play-in. I think the last eight teams in the field at large fair. should be the play-ins. You shouldn't, have, you shouldn't punish a 16 seed 
other side of the coin there is those teams and programs do get an NCAA tournament win when they win those games. So that's cool to have on the the old resume for the program. But I would like like make it to where all 11 seeds are play-in games and have eight teams, four games, and those are the 11 seeds. That's the change I would make. So I, that, that's fine. I'm fine with that if that's what they wanted to do. Um, I will bring up a hypothetical scenario in which may be a reason as to why they don't do it that way. Um, and not to say this couldn't still happen now, but it's a lot easier to to avoid it with it when it's only four teams. But if one of your if you're seeding it, the let's say like a an automatic qualifier from the Missouri Valley, say Indiana State this year, SIU, sure, SIU. <laughs> Um, if you just seed it one through 68 or one through 72, let's say SIU falls on the nine line or the, the nine line or the 10 line. If you do it that way, if they're an automatic qualifier, you'd have to, you'd have to do those matchups around them. So if you're Southern Illinois, would you rather be a nine seed or be uh, in that situation, be like an 11 seed and instead of, you see what I'm saying? Like, does this make sense? Like if, if you're just seeding it one through Are you talking about how sometimes the play in games in 11, sometimes it's a 12. Is that what you're talking about? Yes, sort like of. It depends on yes, who is correct. playing in the playing game. And when it's easier to get around it when well, it's yeah, four I mean, teams. But if they expand that to eight, then that yeah. makes it a little more complicated. Yeah, I see what you're saying. And okay, maybe I don't go as far as making the eleven seed the playing game every year. Right. But I do think the playing games should be at large and yeah, not no, I agree. These sixteen seeds that right. win their tournament and clinch their spot. Yeah, so I'm whatever. I'm fine with that. I I I don't yeah. love the 16 seeds playing doing the play-in game. Um, oh. I get why they do it, but I don't love that either. Um, it was senior night tonight. We didn't mention that. And Purdue oh, that's had true. a, had a yes. question about Goody, which you asked me today before doing some research. Yes. Do your research, Logan. I was trying. Go ahead. Um, <laughs> oh, so never mind. Yes, Luke Goody <laughs> did go through senior day festivities today. Uh, granted, Luke is only a – Soft junior, junior, no, junior. Yeah. Um, he is he graduated as in terms of academics. Um, yeah. so they let him go through the senior day festivities. There are no indications that Luke Goody is transferring. Um, he just they wanted to make sure that they recognize that he went through the he went through the pr- procedures festivities to honor what yeah. he did. Uh, but yeah, there is no indication that Luke Goody is is transferring or leaving after this season. Did you notice that his jersey was different than everyone else's in their in their presentation? No. All the other seniors had the traditional whites with the Illinois and the number on the front. Goody had the throwback that they wore tonight, but the back with his name and number 10 on it. I just thought it was interesting. Why is that? Uh, I that maybe they get to pick which jersey they want and which side they yeah. want. Maybe it's because he's not technically a senior. This is like a he's just graduating and not going anywhere. So yeah, fair enough. Uh, but no, there is no indication at this point that Luke Goody is leaving. <laughs> and the alternate universe were I know place. Logan's answer. Um, yeah, my answer is it's very obvious. Um, Mine would it, depend on the year. If it were to happen this year, I would root for Illinois because Illinois has a chance to do something very special. If it was 2007 or 2000, not 2007, was it 07? Yeah, yeah 2007, when SIU was having their best year in French in program history, probably SIU. So for me, it would depend on the situation of each programs. Probably, I would root for whichever team had a better chance to go deeper. Yeah, my uh, my really affiliation to Southern Illinois Athletics is you just gave them a lot of money. <laughs> They were terrible the four years I was in school. <laughs> so yeah. like I just I yeah. just did not grow the same. And there's they've still pretty much been not even they haven't even made the tournament um yeah since then. So no, my answer is definitely Illinois. Um <laughs> I mean <laughs> 
do you see what's on the screen right now? <laughs> we have an Illinois logo. I, we're both wearing Illinois. I, have, I mean, yeah, a little bit of a homer here. Yeah, we're not trying to, <laughs> we're not to, trying to hide um, pre- pretend that we're anything other than an <laughs> Illinois basketball podcast. Sorry. I mean, Sorry on. if that offends. You're more than welcome to head to uh, Purdue podcast if you'd rather watch their after show. Um, anything else? I think we've been on no, here for I'm, nearly we've been an on hour. Here a long time, but we've got a, a lot of people on here watching us. So I didn't well, know I'm glad that you're go. all here. Um, anything else you want to talk about? No. Promote? Probably not. Any other business? Any other? Are you going to do a live stream of the Oscars on Sunday? I don't know. No. I don't know. I'm so stressed out about Sunday. Um, no, I'm excited for the Oscars. I haven't even done the Logies, honestly. Um, I'm so behind on all of that stuff. But I did go see Dune the other night, so I'm at least ahead on 2024. I, but, couldn't, uh, I turned on the first one. It's on Netflix or whatever. And I, just, I couldn't do it. It's just it not is my... the first one. Um, the first Dune movie is the first half of a book. So it is um, very slow. It's a lot of setup. Okay. It's a lot of exposition. Um, not a lot happens in the first Dune movie. It is a yeah. technical achievement, technical masterpiece. It is a beautiful yeah. film, but not a lot happens in the first movie. The second movie being the second half of the book, it is a lot more exciting. A lot more things That's happen in the second movie, but you really need to see the first movie to really really appreciate the second movie. So legitimately, what will you be watching Sunday? Illinois or the Oscars? I'll have them both on. Okay. I'll have them both on. I'll have two. I'll start the two screen <laughs> setup on um, whatever. Uh, why not? Yeah. The Logies. I'll have them at some point. You can, you can promote see it. all my movie takes. Promote um, it if you got it. Uh, yeah. I'll have, I'll have my two TVs set up. Much to <clears throat> Allison's dismay. She'll just have to get over it for two weeks. Uh, yeah. But yes, oh, I will yeah. have both. Mine's coming. Mine's coming. Yeah. Will we be doing a post-game show on Sunday? Uh, it's up to you. Okay. Well, I don't know. TBD, I guess. Uh, Matt Vanderbilt, welcome to the pod. Oscar Sleeper. Um, you're asking for gambling purposes? Um, can you gamble on that? Best picture. Absolutely. You can. Really? Certain books will let you gamble on it. Uh, Oppenheimer will be winning Best Picture, so there's really no sleeper there. Um, yeah, it wasn't. Uh, what's my favorite movie? You're, I don't know. what. What is your favorite movie? That's a good question. Probably okay. Dark Knight. Well, that's a great one. So you have good taste there. Um, Oppenheimer, my opinion on Oppenheimer is, again, similar to Dune, technical masterpiece. Uh, it wasn't my personal favorite. Um, it's very high on my list. Um, yeah. But uh, it's I can appreciate it and respect it for what it is. It was really all about the spectacle and seeing the big blast in the theater. Um, Oscars sleeper. Um, <sighs> there isn't one because Oppenheimer's going to win. <laughs> I'm trying to think of any other category. Uh, I feel like most of them are pretty locked in. Um, if I was going to take anything as a sleeper, it would be um, Carter, Elliot, and Greg. What I don't know. I don't know. Not not Carter and Greg. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I'll have to. I'll have to think about that. I did love American Fiction, though. Um, I really enjoyed that movie. Okay, I think we should shut it down. I yeah, let's go ahead. I think we've let's been go ahead for a while. Um, you guys can all um, go watch another uh, post game pod if you want to get your fix longer. Uh, but we appreciate you being here with us to start. I don't know what this the numbers awesome. have been. Uh, Craig will tell me later, yeah. uh, and I'll see the views later. But thank you to all of you for doing this. Let's just be like and honest. subscribe while you're here. Like and subscribe. Like and subscribe. Um, let's just be very transparent right now. You and I have not had this conversation, but we need to have it here. I do not know what the next few weeks will hold <laughs> for our show because we yeah. both have regular jobs. Um, so Illinois will be playing at least Friday night of the Big Ten yeah. tournament. So Big Ten tournament weekend, we should be able to still yeah. do shows. 
Yeah. Once the big tournament starts, I have no idea what it'll yeah. look like. So if we're playing at a, at noon on Thursday, like I don't know that we'll be doing a show. Um, yeah. But we will, because of the two or three seed, we should be fine um, Friday and then potentially Saturday and Sunday. I imagine we will yeah. try to do a um, Selection Sunday show uh, like we have in the past. Am, mm-hmm. I, am I correct on that? That'll be the plan. I forgot about that, um, but yeah. So we will do, we may do a show this coming Sunday, but it's very possible that because the Oscars are also on that I may not be be participating. (laughs) Um, Then we will do stuff for the Big Ten tournament. We will do a Selection Sunday show. um, And then when the tournament gets here, we'll just have to see what the schedule looks like. But for those of you that have tuned in. Have you seen Robert Rosenthal's uh, keeping track of like what seed Illinois gets? Like. I've seen various 90% tweets. of the time we're in the top half of the region, yes. which is insane. <sighs> I did see that. I don't know how that like how yep. that happens, but like, yeah, that's pretty incredible. Yeah. Um, which I think it's likely nice. again, um, cause I think they're probably going to be a four seed. So that's probably yep. in play, uh, again, this seat, this season as yep. well. I think four and yep. five is more likely than three, um, or definitely two. Yep. Um, thank you to you, Craig. Thank you to all you viewers and listeners. Um, and uh, we will see you again. If not Sunday, we will see you uh, next Friday for the first game of Illinois' run in the Big Ten tournament in Minneapolis. Of all yeah, places, so did you get your tickets? Are you going? No. I assume no. you're not one of the people that bought the sold out women's tournament tickets to go see no. Caitlin play. But uh, Big Ten women's basketball has been pretty on fire this year. Wonder it's why been that is. Pretty great. Although it was, it did kind of suck that she broke the record with a free throw, but whatever. Did you see the big announcement from MLB The Show today? Yeah. That's okay. my excitement on that one. All right. Uh, we'll leave it at that. <laughs> for Craig, I am Logan. Yeah. <laughs> Final again from <laughs> Champaign, uh, Purdue 77, Illinois 71. Um, I don't even, we didn't mention it. What is Illinois' record? I don't know. 22 um, and 8. 22 and 8. Uh, last game of the regular season Sunday night in Iowa City against the Hawkeyes. Thankfully, Caitlin Clark will not play in that game. We'll see you next time, whenever that is. Peace, love, ILL. Barbecue. <laughs>